Top pick number one, premium brands, the producer of specialty foods, processed meats, things like that. Yeah, so this has been a name in our core strategy for, for a number of years. So we've been along for this journey with George, the CEO, as he's put together a whole bunch of great assets in North America and is really growing inorganically, but also organically, which is one of the things that we found to be very impressive with them. So I think it's an interesting time to look at premium brands. They have had some challenges, as you can imagine, with supply chains, the, the pandemic, things of that nature. But we think they'll work through these challenges and actually come out on the other side uh, in a much stronger position. So one, one of the things that has hurt them over the last year has been inflation. So, you know, costs have gone higher and they haven't been able to pass those costs on to uh, pass those costs on. And so now they're able to pass these costs on as inflation is coming over. If you listen, if you're rolling over, if you listen to their last earnings call, they did mention that, you know, they're seeing these cost pressures subside now in this last quarter. So good news for the macro, too. Uh, and so we think they're going to have a, a, a few quarters of really healthy margins here, uh, which should be positive for, for the stock. And we think it could react well to that. Um, the other interesting thing about premium brands is that they do some, um, they make processed or, or, or prepackaged sandwiches and things like that for the quick serve restaurants. Yeah. And so, as you can imagine, at a time when it's harder to find labor and harder to find workers to come in, that's something that their customers are really interested in. So we think it's a good time to own a high quality name like premium brands at a record low valuation. Exchange income, EIF, uh, remind us what they do. Yeah, so this is a, a, a relatively recent name in our Canadian equity fund. Um, so what they do is they focus on aerospace, parts, manufacturing, and it's, a, it's an acquisition company. So they, ha they own a whole bunch of different assets, mostly out west, um, where they, have, whether it's helicopters or regional, regional jets or, or spare parts or matting in the energy sector or utility space. So they have a bunch of these businesses that they've, they've brought together over the years. And we're talking, they've done about 12 acquisitions worth north of a billion dollars over the last decade. And now they're generating hundreds of millions of dollars in free cash flow every year paying a really nice dividend yield, about 5%. And we just think they're at a really nice inflection point here. So, you know, the valuation doesn't reflect all of these gains that they've made um, in free cash flow and in, in turning these businesses into, uh, into really strong operating franchises. So we, we think the CEO's done a great job over the years, and we don't think his stock price is fully reflecting that uh, free cash flow conversion that they've been able to demonstrate. So, um, so it got on our radar, and, uh, and it quickly became a position in our ACE fund. And finally, Agilent Technologies. Uh, remind us what they do and tell us why you like them. Yeah, so Agilent's a, a, a U.S. company. It's in our it's in our U.S. dividend fund, and and so this is a name we've held. We we got involved with Agilent in the pandemic during the pandemic because we thought this was one of those really big winners that we're, we're going to come out of this uh, in a much stronger position. And so they make consumables for labs. Uh, they do measurement tools. They have uh, they have a whole bunch of, of machines that can look at the the properties of certain chemicals or molecules. So they really help the pharmaceutical industry, the en energy industry, the chemical industry. And as you can imagine, right now with green energy, with you know looking at hydrogen, looking at all of these different chemicals, not to mention the pharmaceutical industry with all these interesting advancement inv advancements in genomics. There's all sorts of demand for their products right now. And this last quarter, they actually put up 17% organic growth, which is pretty impressive. So this is on the back of all the strength that we've seen coming out of the pandemic. And so they're guiding to, you know, 5 to 6% organic growth going forward. Um, and one of, one of the interesting things about Agilent is they have a, a very underutilized balance sheet. And so there's a lot of small companies, as you can imagine, uh, that they can acquire and tuck into their, into their business. And so we think it's just a matter of time before they they flex that, that balance sheet to buy some of these assets from, who knows, maybe Roper wants to sell one of their assets or Thermo Fisher, which is one of their competitors, or maybe there's a whole bunch of tuck-ins they want to roll up into the business that will be accretive to shareholders. So the valuation is, is reasonable. Uh, the dividend is there and it's growing and they've been performing, you know, just uh, it, performing in, in, in very strong manner. So we, we like this name and continue to hold it. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, the dividend, not a huge dividend. I'm showing a 0.6%, but there is a dividend. Yeah, yeah, there is a small dividend, yeah. but it has it has been growing. The share price has been responding really well over the sure. last over the last year or so to to the to the strong operating results. Oh, okay.